once again getting back to that training in the Word of God. Where you know, you know, you know the truth. I just love the Word. You know the truth. Let me tell you, you are not going to want to have yes. anything to do with unholiness. Yes. Downtrodden, beaten in life. You know, taking the knocks of the world. You know, you juggle a thousand balls at once. You feel like, I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. hey, wherever I flip, I flip. Oh! <laughs> excited about this program and I have no doubt that every one of you are going to be blessed. The Word of God is a powerful tool. In fact, every single believer should be completely skilled in the Word. Do you know why? Because that is how we live in the abundant life that Jesus won for us. That's how we become victorious. In fact, when we learn exactly how the Word of God works, we understand how to use it and appropriate it to our lives, it actually has the power to transform us from the inside out so we can become the overcomers that God intended us to be. Now, in this series of The Higher Life, I'm so excited about it because we're going to be dealing with the armor of God. Now, that is a very special subject indeed. And why I love it so much is because it's really going to teach us how we overcome in this world. It's a powerful, powerful spiritual armor that the Holy Spirit has given to us. But to bring out the richness of what the truth of God's Word has to say about this armor, and to put it in a way that we can actually understand it practically and apply it to our lives, I brought some friends along with me. Won't you help me welcome them to our set today? <laughs> On my panel to help me today, I have some very special people and I'd like to introduce you to Tracy Treadray. <laughs> Tracy is a very special friend of mine and she's also the founder of Real Women Real Life Television Program. Not only that, she has an outstanding international women's ministry. Won't you welcome Tracy? Also a very dear friend to me is Titi Goru and Titi is the founder of the women's ministry called Women of Vision. Won't you welcome Titi? Of course, Titi comes all the way from Vintook, Namibia. So what a privilege it is to have you with us. Thank you, Titi. We also have someone very special, and that is Linda Shooter. Now, Linda has a very special place in my heart because she is a writer just like me. Linda Shooter has, is the founder of Lady Rose Magazine and International Women's Ministry. Welcome, Linda. Also, in the house with us today, we have a very powerful woman of God by the name of Rihanna Thumbram. And Rihanna is really precious. She has such a powerful ministry. She comes from the Logos Bible Church in Centurion, Pretoria. Won't you welcome Rihanna? <laughs> On today's program, we're going to be speaking about the second part of the Belt of Truth. Remember, this is an extremely important part of our spiritual armor. So come with me, let's go see what the Word has to say about the Belt of Truth. Well, I am so excited to get straight back into the belt of truth. What a wealth of knowledge we are getting from the Word. I'm so kind of caught up in the moment and I know we're going to move straight into where we came out of. Now, again, just to bring back the emphasis, we understand that the belt of truth mm -hmm. has everything to do with the revelational knowledge of who Jesus is and who we are in Him. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. But unless we know who we are in Him, we will never be able to understand what is deception from the enemy or what is yes. truth. Yes. So I think, Titi, let's bring that in. How can we tell the difference? Okay, this is how we go about it. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says, Study 
that is study the word. Yes. Yeah. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Brilliant. So it's important for us to study. It's important for us to meditate on the word of God and important also to apply the word of God. You know in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Brother Paul wrote here, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Mm. Huh. So mm. what the devil uses are schemes, mm -hmm. devices, mm -hmm. But then if you are ignorant, Osea 4, 6 says, my people, God's people, are destroyed for lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. So one. when you don't have knowledge, Satan will take advantage of your ignorance because you are ignorant That's of it. the word of God. He That's uses it. that. that he uses it. fear. And the word of God says, for God has not given, given you us a spirit oh, of fear. Oh, dear. I, I, mean, I totally agree 100%. But once again, we come to the point of if you no are not getting into the word, how do you know if it's the truth? How do you, and it, there's a very, very simple, straightforward way of, okay, you must get into the word, obviously, right? Mm. But if you're not getting into it daily, how do you know if it's truth or not? Very simply. Father God will never, ever make you feel bad about yourself. That's good. Mm. That's, That's a good one. That's good. That's good. That's He's good not one. the accuser He's of the brethren. He's not the accuser. Mm. It makes no difference what you were doing before mm. you went to church. Mm. Yeah. It makes no difference what you were doing in the week. Is God ignorant to it? Of course not. God mm. knows everything. Mm. But he will never make you feel bad about it. So if the enemy comes and says you're a loser, you're a fake, you're mm. a hypocrite, you don't belong here, you're unworthy, you're stupid... You're a bad mother, you're an awful wife, blah, 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 blah. We hear those things, right? It is not from the Father. It's, mm. it's, not, the it's word. not the Word. It's not the Word. It's not from the Lord. Yes. And that is a very simple way of knowing is it from the Lord, or is it truth, or is it lies? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Father will never Absolutely. ever accuse you. That's ever. what the Word says, so, no condemnation. Yeah, that's, right? it. that's what no, I was going to say. That, 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 exactly. We know. Yeah. We're on the same level here. Yeah, I got it. it. Okay. That's it. But and the thing you said about rightly dividing mm -hmm. the truth. Yes. We have to know the Word yes. so that we can recognize yes. the lie because the Word is the truth. Yeah. The enemy is the father of lies. Yeah. So all that he speaks is lies. Yeah. And if we take it back to the garden, like you mentioned mm -hmm. with Eve, mm -hmm. you know, What's so amazing about that point in the garden mm. is that when Satan came up to her and he slithered up to her and he said to her, did God, God really, really say? Good. The first thing he challenged was the truth. That's yes. right. But the next thing he said, did God really say? Wow. And then he challenged her identity. Mm. Wow. But you see, the yeah. truth was released. That was in Genesis 3. Yeah. But way back in Genesis 1, 26, mm. Mm. her identity was released. That's because right. Satan came to tempt her to say, you know what, I can make you more like God. That's right. mm. But in Genesis 1, 26, God that's said, that's you've been created yeah. in my image mm. and in my likeness. Right. So when we know the truth yeah. and we know who, the, who we are, he yeah. cannot challenge our identity because the truth speaks and we've got that revelation yes. that you yes. spoke it's been infused yes. we Linda? have that revelation absolutely and it's the same if you take that piece and you take it to where jesus was tempted in the uh, in the desert yes. what did satan do he said if you are the son of god mm. so question he, again question again mm. his identity but mm. christ knew who was in mm. he, he knew who he was he knew mm. he was the son of god mm. so he immediately he took it back to the word and he said, but the word says this and this. So he knew the truth. So he wasn't tempted in his identity because he knew who he was. Oh, I love that. He knew who he was. I so if we that. know Christ by knowing the word, like it says in 1 John 1, where it says that um, the word became flesh, mm. which is Christ. Mm. So if we know the word, we know Christ. And in that, we're infused into our identity in Christ. And we can stand on him mm. because That's he's good. our identity. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. Do you know um, a very wonderful man of God that I really enjoy getting, not just my husband, but <laughs> another man of God that I really enjoy gleaming from him. Uh, he spoke, Jeremy Pearson, yes. he spoke about something that has really stuck in my spirit. He spoke about when we are so secure in understanding how much we are loved yes. and how much we belong to him, yes. that becomes our identity. Yes, right. So again, when the enemy comes with yes. the whole thing 
talking about you aren't this or you inferior or what hands are those that are lifted up. You know, like you said, it actually has nothing to do with him. Nothing to do with the enemy. We have nothing. He has no right to even speak to us. And as we need to understand, as we spoke about, we have the mind of Christ. So that that definitely doesn't come from God. As you said, we need to discern what is God's and what is the enemy's. But the enemy does still interrupt our thoughts. That's right. This is the battleground, which we're going to get into. But the bottom line is every time you hear a thought or sense a thought that challenges or contradicts the love that God has for you and who you are in Him, ignore it immediately. Wow. Immediately ignore it. It has nothing to do with Him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. This is so good. Titi, you yeah, have come. I was going to say this. Do you know how to tell the difference between uh, a genuine South African round, land from a fake one? It's what they do is they will make sure you learn the original, mm. the fake, I mean, the, the genuine South African land notes. Right. So once you know that, the moment you see a fake one, you will be able to dictate. That's why it is important for you to stay in oh, the word. Oh, I love it. Yeah. You know, Paul said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly. Not That's right. Not something that you, you know, you visit here and there where if you are in a, in a problem, important. you know, that's the time you go, mm -hmm. wherever I flip, I flip. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And then we put uh, the, uh, this, uh, what the fleece. You, the fleece. Yeah. 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 Fleece. yeah. If it's of God, when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, a woman of God is supposed to be a woman of the word. You are yes. supposed to yes. study the word, yes. not just visit the word, yeah. but study it. Meditate upon it. Don't wait for your husband. Yeah. There are not Whoa. some ladies, yeah, so they can't even pray for their children. Hmm. They are waiting for the man to come back from work, to come and lay his hand. So the, de the devil should be tormenting your child before, before your husband comes yeah. back from work. No. You should be a woman of the word. Yeah. You should not allow the devil to speak to you yeah. where you are supposed to stay in the word, create time. I like what... Uh, I'll go back to Joyce again. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, Joyce said to, yes. to her children when they were still young, well, she would lock herself up in a room where she prays and studies the word. Mm -hmm. And then the children will come knocking, mommy, mommy, so you better leave me because if I come out without spending time in the world, you will not love what you will see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Whoa. I, I also with Mama Copeland, Gloria Copeland said the same thing too, that God told her, you should stay with me, stay in the world, spend time with me in the morning, and I will take care of the rest of the day. I love so it. As, to, as women of God, we've got to have time with the Lord. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Linda, come, I can see you've got yes, something. Um, I want to come back to the notes. Mm. I used to work in the bank, and how they trained us to feel the difference in the notes, we had to count packs and packs of money, real notes. Yes. And then they will slip um, fake notes in between. So you're not allowed to look at the notes. You have to run through it with your fingers. Mm. And then when you know the, the real, mm. you, you can felt, feel it straight away. Yes, you felt it right away. So it's sure. once again getting back to that training in the Word of God. Mm. Where you know, you know, you know the truth. I just love the Word. You know the truth. Mm. And then when you come across the lies, even in feelings, yes. like the feeling, you will know that's not a real feeling because mm. that's not how Christ will make mm. you feel. Wow. That's not how His Word will make you feel. That's yes, right. the Word prunes us. And it washes us and it cleanses us. And that's why people shy away from the word because mm. it brings out things, but it comes in love. God mm. doesn't come like this man sitting up there with a stick. He's not mm -hmm. that. Mm. He's Correct. love. So when you read the word, mm. you experience his love. Mm. And through the correction in love, mm. he prunes you and he cleanses mm. you and he purifies mm. you. Yes. So that feeling against a feeling of condemnation, mm. you'll start to recognize as you practice in the word. I like what you say with the feeling of condemnation. Yes. Okay, because like we spoke yes. about, the word makes it very clear mm. that 
there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But we do know when we are abiding in the vine, when you are abiding in your relationship with Jesus to the point where you surrender in completely to him so that we infused with him. Let me tell you, you are not going to want to have anything to do with unholiness. You're not going to want to have anything to do with any kind of sin. In fact, immediately inside of you is a conviction of the Holy Spirit, not a condemnation. And we need to understand the difference. The conviction of the Holy Spirit comes with an overwhelming love and acceptance. And acceptance. Come on. Something about the belt of truth is that the strips that covered the loin were covered in studs. Okay. And those studs were to protect the loins. Wow. Now there's a whole teaching right there. I like that. But on this issue of condemnation, mm. for me, your loins are your vulnerable parts. Mm. Yes. And that belt of truth yes. covers, yes. girds, protects us even in our vulnerabilities. Wow. Absolutely. Wow. So Absolutely. even in those times of failing mm. and feeling mm. weak, mm. there is truth that protects us yes. and shields wow. us. Wow. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. awesome. And again, it comes back to identity. Yeah. Yeah. Right back to identity. Yeah. Do you know when the enemy sees you, mm. who does he see? According to the word, he sees Jesus. Why? Because I am the righteousness of God yeah. in Christ Jesus. Jesus. That is who I am. Mm. And that is what the truth mm. has told me. Yeah. But it hasn't just become head knowledge. That has become heart knowledge. Mm. I know who I am. Yeah. And if we know who we are and we have to remind ourselves oh, yes. of who we, we are. are. Tracy, back to what you said in the beginning. When we started on the belt of truth, yeah. you spoke about how that belt is something that has a weight yeah. Yeah. to yeah. it. Yeah. The, the, the truth changes the way that you walk. Mm. Yes. It changes your posture. Yes. Wow. It changes the way that you look at the world. Yes. From a downtrodden to you looking properly through the eyes of God. Wow. Um, you know, there, there's so many uh, pictures that I get in my head, specifically of women who are downtrodden. Right. Downtrodden, beaten in life you know, taking the knocks of the world. You know, you juggle a thousand balls at once. You feel like, I just can't do this anymore. The belt of truth gives you that strength. You know, these, these weightlifters, yes. they wear those belts to help them um, carry those or lift up those heavy weights. You, you know what I'm talking about? I don't know, I know there's probably a, a proper word for it, but I don't know what those names are. But that belt actually supports the entire body to stand firm. That's good. Mm. To stand firm. So the belt of truth supports you completely mm. to stand firm. Firm. It Brilliant. doesn't matter what hits you. It doesn't matter what weight you're carrying. It doesn't matter what's trying to pressure you. You are standing firm. Right. Because that's the point of the belt, to, to lift up the posture. Right. And um, just something uh, back to the word, which is such Please. a basic thing. And we all know this. We know, right, that the word of God is the words of God. Mm -hmm. We know this is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, so a way that I was explaining it to my children a while ago, a very simplistic way, but we sometimes need to be simple, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that when you, when daddy writes me a love letter, when, when my husband wrote me a love letter, he, he wrote it in those days before there was emails and yeah. WhatsApps and... When we remember how to use a pen <laughs> on <the paper. laughs> I might have had to use the gift of interpretation to read some of the things he was saying. Lord, help me. What is he saying? But anyway... And that wasn't just because you didn't have the glass. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a love letter that he wrote to me. I still have those love letters wow. today. I keep them in a box. It's like my little treasure. My daughter yeah. like loves them and I let her read them. It's very precious. This is God's love letter to That's us. Right. Wow. Every day he's giving us his wow. love. Every wow. day he's giving us his love letter. Wow. And if we're not reading it, and if we're not getting the truth mm -hmm. to gird us, to support mm -hmm. us, we are not getting the love letter. Yes. We are not hearing yes. how he feels about us. Yes. And that's as simple as that. Without reading the love letters, mm -hmm from God himself, mm. absolutely. we have no idea yeah. how he feels about yeah. us. Mm. We hear what people say, Jesus loves you, and you're like, oh, that's nice. You hear the song, Jesus loves me, this, oh, that's nice. Mm. But unless you read it for yourself, you're like, whoa. Mm. And that's what Linda mm. talks about, the infusing of it. It goes from here to, absolutely. he loves me. Yes. It, just, it yes. lifts you up. I love it. It's awesome. I love it. Love it, yeah. love it, love it. But again, it has to be revelational knowledge, right? right? And Titi, you even spoke about how important it is for a woman 
Mm. And because we're speaking primarily to mm. women, actually anybody, but mm. to yeah. know the truth yourself. Mm -hmm. And I also got this from something that Gloria Copeland wrote the one time, um, how she spoke about why are you waiting for mm. when you are sick to go yes. find your healing yes, scripture? Right. Mm. Mm. And why are you waiting when until you feeling depressed or the weight of depression mm -hmm. before you go find yeah. something mm -hmm. to lift mm -hmm. your soul? Yeah. You know, why, mm. why do we have to wait for the emergency mm. before we go mm. to the truth? Yeah. Mm. It's something that we have to constantly have part of yeah. our lives. What, what does the, the book of Proverbs say? It says the principal thing. Mm. Yeah. Make the word mm -hmm. the With principal yeah. thing. Yeah. Rayana? You know, speaking on that, why, why do we have to wait for that event? There's something better than divine healing. Divine healing is great. Mm -hmm. yes. But there's something better than divine healing and it's divine health. Love yes. it. Yeah. You know, and yes. you can only stay in that place of divine health when you're in the word all the mm -hmm. time. And I'm reminded of a story that Lester Sumrall, the spiritual son of Smith Wigglesworth, he shared about how when he went into Smith Wigglesworth's house, he had this newspaper rolled under his arm and Smith being the man that he was, and he said, Girl, you can come in here, but those lies of the yes. devil must stay oh, yes, out there. Right. Yeah. You know? Yes, right. and, brilliant. And I mean, yeah. we know Smith read no other book except the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, today we've got everything. We've got the BBC, we've got Facebook. Right. And I always right. say to my church, you know, all those things are important. I'm not saying don't read the news. We've got to be relevant. We understand all of that. But we've got to get our face out of Facebook and get our face back in the book. The <laughs> we've got to get make time to switch off the BBC and get back into the BIBLE yeah. because while those are all the sense knowledge yeah. things, we have a revelation knowledge that supersedes mm -hmm. and overrides all of those sense knowledge yeah. things. Brilliant. Absolutely. Linda, yes. come, tell me. I actually feel that the question is going to come about how. They hear us talk and we've experienced, we've all experienced the truth of the word. Exactly. And where I was, was I took Ephesians 1, 17 to 19 where it says that, and I prayed that for about 40 days, and within that, God opened up the eyes of my understanding so that Love I it. can be enlightened to Where? receive the revelation knowledge of who Christ is. Love That's that. That's what it says there in yes. um, Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. And we are going to get straight into that. Okay. So I want, I want you to make sure that you watch our next series. We've come again to the <laughs> end of this. Oh, wow. And uh, wow. it's really time to go straight to oh, our please. live studio your audience and find out what they have to say about this. So we've just come back from a wealth of information and knowledge from the truth of God's Word and we have a studio audience here who are so eager to get their questions out. I know that there are those of you at home who have so many questions too concerning the belt of truth and we want to be able to answer those. So you can email us, the address is on your screen at higherlife at myfaithtv.com. But now let's go straight to the audience and find out who of you have a question? Please, won't you stand? How and where do we start teaching our children how to discern between what is truth and what is deception? How and when do we get to teach our children what is truth and what is deception? They need to start learning from a young age. Rayana, I'm sure that you can answer that question. Well, Jenny, you know, I think in my own experience, you know, with my three girls is that I've realized that children eat what you eat. Mm. Mm. And if you are eating the world mm. and you're not eating the word, then that's how they will be trained up. Yes. Mm. And the scripture says, train, the, train your children up in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they're not depart, depart from it. So we have to train them in the word mm. because it is the word that is the voice of truth. Mm. And it's only, as it was said in, in one of the shows, that it's that those fake and real notes. When you teach them how to identify the real note, then they'll recognize the fake. So we get them into the Word. But it's got to be us as parents taking the time to train them in the Word. In fact, the Scriptures teach us that one of the reasons that God chose Abraham was that He knew Abraham was going to impart 
the truths about who God was to his children. And so it's vital to us that we live that life. And you know what? It doesn't mean we're perfect as parents. Mm. We try to live the word out. But you know, if we're honest, even in our failings and in our mistakes, mm. and they see that we are real, and they see genuine repentance, mm. and see us keep bouncing back, and keep waking up every day, and staying that course, serving him, in seeing our authenticity, they'll begin to hear and see the word in action. And see it in their own yes. lives too. Brilliant. Remember, our children are going to pick up on what we do more than just what we say. Make sure you're living out what you really are believing. Now, we have time for one more question. Studio audience, ah, please, won't you stand? What is your question? My question is, what if you know the truth and you choose to disobey it? Whoa. What if you know the truth, but you still choose to disobey? Tracy, are you going to answer that for us? Definitely, definitely. Let's take it back to the Roman soldiers because we always got to bring it back into context. When the Roman soldier actually stepped out of rank and when he disobeyed the general, what they used to do is they used to remove the belt as a sign of discipline. Goodness. It showed that the, the soldier was actually being disciplined by removing the belt. Now, how does that apply to us once again? When we are purposefully living in habitual sin and we know that we are doing it, even if you know the truth, the truth won't have any power in your life. Sure. It will have absolutely no power because you're choosing, in essence, to take it off. So whether you know the truth or not, if you, or if you know the truth but you're choosing not to live the truth, the truth will have no power in your life because it's actually been removed from you. An important, important question and truth to end on today. Now, remember those of you who have questions at home and you would like us to answer them, please feel free to email us at higherlife at myfaithtv.com and we'll get straight back to you and answer those questions that you have concerning the belt of truth. Well, that brings us to the close of our second part of the armor of God when we discuss the belt of truth. And I know that you've been blessed by that. Our spiritual armor is so important because it causes us to walk in victory and abundant life with Jesus Christ. I would like to thank my panel for being such a brilliant panel, for bringing the truth of God's word, and of course, our studio audience. What a wonderful crowd. We're just so enthusiastic and so eager to learn about the Word. And those of you who've been watching this program, wherever you are watching from, we want you to know how much we love you and appreciate you being a part of this awesome series. Now make sure you watch our next uh, program that's coming on when we deal with the third part of the Belt of Truth. You do not want to miss it. Until then, God bless you and goodbye. So many people will read the Word of God without the Holy Spirit. Mm. So they won't understand it. So they hear all these things, but they don't have the insight of the Holy Spirit making the Word alive. We've got Dr. Google. We've got the psychologist down the road, but we've got to get it back to the Word because it's not our life, it's not our experience, it's not our history, it's not our. Re it's the Word and the Word alone. Heaven and earth will pass away, but, but this the Word will remain forever. forever. And it's that drawing into Him and drawing into His Word because His Word is life, it's truth. That's the identity. This is so important.